Excellent. Action. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. If you saw our last video of Dominican Republic, um, you'll know that we finally made it out of Dominican Republic with the boat this time. And we left the north coast, part of Plata, and embarked on an overnight sail. It was going to be over 20 hours, so we decided to go overnight, obviously, so that we could uh, get into Grand Turk during daylight. Um, so it started out pretty well. Uh, it had been a while since any of us had been on a moving boat, and unfortunately we didn't really take that into consideration. Um, we've always in the past been fine, uh, not really had an issue of much with seasickness, um, but this go-around was different for the three of us over here. Uh, so when it was dinner time, um, I decided that I'd go ahead and do dinner, and we decided to have some sausages. So I was standing in the galley, and I made this kind of smart aleck video of us cooking sausages and how yummy it was going to be. Um, so a little info for you all out there, if you're going to go out onto some big rolly seas, don't have sausage for dinner, and then sail into the dark where you don't have a horizon to look at anymore because it turns out to be awful. But we made it through. Uh, Lisa and I usually have a set schedule for overnighters, but it didn't pan out. We just kind of took the helm when one of us wasn't ill. Um, the other thing is the auto helm had gone out. Right. So we were manually steering. We had lost our auto helm at that point, so somebody had to be on the wheel constantly. This boat won't steer itself. It likes to turn into the wind. Um, so somebody had to be at the helm looking at the compass the whole time. That doesn't really help your stomach. So anyway, we made it to Grand Bank. Uh, we made it to Grand Turk. Um, and we dropped anchor in uh, Cockburn Town. And we didn't spend too much time there. We only stayed in Turks and Caicos for a total of seven days. Eight? Uh, well, we got a freebie. <laughs> uh, legally, we were there seven days. Um, but when the customs agent checked us in, she gave us an extra day, which was nice. Um, so we didn't really get to spend too much time in any one place, but we adventured when we could and we got some pretty decent footage of what we saw so watch the video michael did an amazing job well oh, i wasn't <laughs> expecting that let's not this is much better than the dominican republic video just let me tell you that we've sorted out our audio problems for the most part so we'll have not only epic visuals but now we have legitimate audio to go along with it so enjoy yeah. getting tossed out of the bed. Um, apparently the swell had changed direction and was coming from the west right on our beam and we were anchored in a spot where when the swell comes from the west they turn into breakers. So we were just outside the break line but we were getting tossed around well enough the dinghy was uh, taking on some water so Lisa and I jumped up and 
were able to get the anchor up and get motored out. So we figured we'd head to the north end of Grand Turk. There's an inlet <clears throat> for what they call a creek uh, inside the island. And it was too rough to even chance getting in there. So we decided to turn out and we're headed toward Caicos now. Um, the weather is beautiful, except that there's no wind, so we're motoring. And uh, we're not making great time, but we're making time nonetheless. Let's see if I can give you a focus here. So right now we're at 3.7 knots, now 4 knots. So, still got a little time to go. But everybody's safe, and uh, I'm in the shade, so I'm happy about that. We're gonna do this a little bit differently and just grate your cheese into the bowl. I always end up with just like a tiny bit, not really enough to save cheese. Is it working? Is the lines working? We want to save all your pans. All right. Mm -hmm. Bunch of shy boat kids. Hello, I have one thing to say. She has one thing to say. Hello, Muggles. Muggles. <laughs> because I haven't read or watched Harry Potter, you little sass, but. That's what they call, that's what the magical people call non magical people. I like cheese. That's because you are cheesy. Your jokes are cheesy.
leaving Kaiko's Harbor and headed for Provo. So we should have between a six and eight hour sail today depending on what the wind does. Wish us luck. I want to take a quick minute and explain uh, what you saw in that last clip of the last scene. Um, you pan up from Lisa in the cockpit up to the sails and what you see are two sails that are basically like this. Where all the rest of the video you saw that our sails were on the same side. So what we had going there it's called, and I didn't know this when we first started, it's called wing on wing. Um, it's something that we learned about, uh, that I had heard when listening to an audio book. Um, a young couple had a boat called Bum Fuzzle, and they did a circumnavigation, and they would talk often about being wing on wing, and I didn't really know what that was, so I asked Kevin, who taught us how to sail this boat, what that meant. So he explained it to me, and when you have the wind directly at your back, so let's pretend that you guys are the wind, and you're blowing directly at me. We have our head sail, which is the sail that's up at the bow of the boat, and then we have our main sail, and we usually have those on the same side. Um, so like if you guys are the winds and you're blowing this way, we're getting wind on both sails. But if you're blowing directly at us from directly behind, so we have our head sail and we have our main sail, well now our main sail is completely blocking our head sail. So we're not getting any wind. So what we can do is take that mainsail and swing it out the other direction. We have to tie the boom off with a line that's called a preventer and that keeps it from whipping back over this way. So we get that thing secure and now we're what's called wing on wing, where we're collecting wind on both sails even though it's coming from directly behind us. So a little more uh, detail about the wind and the sails. This is for our homeschool kids. Um, you'll notice that a, a sail when it's up, it's, it's not like this, it's not getting wind flat, it's got some curve to it. So 
the way the sail works, you would notice that, that this design with a curvature on the inside and, and it's convex on the outside is similar. If you were to flip it this way, it's similar to an airplane wing. So the way an airplane wing works, again, if you guys are the wind, uh, the air that flows over the top, because it's concave, um, as opposed to either the way the wing is designed, either flat or convex on the bottom, this air gains speed over this air on the bottom, which causes lift. Okay, so that's what causes our airplanes to stay in the air. So basically what they've done with modern sails is they've turned that on end so now you have the same thing so we have the wind coming at us it gains speed on the outside of the sail well on the inside um, it is not as fast so it causes lift again but it's now causing lift in a forward direction so that's how boats are I always wondered that's how boats are able to sail into the wind um, now not a single boat can sail directly into the wind they have to be a little off and we've learned along the way that monohulls, your standard sailboat, versus a multi-hull catamaran, trimaran, they can, it's called pointing to the wind, they can point to the wind a little better than we can, you know, sometimes as close as 30 degrees to being head on the wind. So our best sailing normally is, is about, I don't know, between 90 and probably about 45 degrees into the wind. Um, when, we're, when we have the wind on the 90, it's on our beam. Basically, we have both sails. Uh, well, for you guys, if you're the wind, uh, we'd be blowing across our head sail and across our main sail, which would actually be this way. And so now we're creating lift in a forward direction this way, where if you're the wind again and, and we're coming at you with our head sail, again, we can't come straight at you. Uh, but if we can get you off to the side here, you're going to fill the sail here, which is going to pop out this side. And again, so we have that wing. And then the same thing with our mainsail. So they actually can work in tandem when, when we're going into the wind like this. Because this wind not only is accelerating across this head sail, but as it accelerates, now it's coming across our mainsail even more rapidly than if we just had the mainsail up by itself. So we're creating more speed that way. So just a real quick basic uh, intro to how sails work and what I've learned so far. Um, so our standard configuration, most times when we're sailing and probably the probably 90% of any drone footage that we show you or footage of the deck, we're going to have our, our sails are going to be up uh, and both to the same side of the boat. Um, there will be times though when we're going to be dead downwind or we're going to put them up wing on wing so we can collect air. Again, if you're blowing straight at us, we need a way to collect air on both sides because if we're like this and we turn it sideways because you're right behind us, we're losing all our wind here. So that's why we want to go here. So if that confused you more, uh, Google how sales work. Uh, if you understand it, awesome.
really bright. Um, That's all right. It is really bright. It's okay. Well, it's like I, I can't see. Okay. I don't remember what I was saying at the end. Enjoy the video. Focus, focus, focus. I want to take a quick minute and explain um, talking to the camera. Take 12. Yeah, hopefully it's recording. That would be funny. Uh, Seriously? Uh,